All right, so I reviewed Final Fantasy 13 a while ago. Hated the game, but also loved the game. Then we got to Final Fantasy 13 2, which is okay. And then we have Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13. My guess is that the title Final Fantasy 13 3 was just too simple? Oh well, there's always that odd one out in the family. And as the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy is the odd one out in the Final Fantasy series, it sounds about right that even the odd one out series has its own odd one out. For those who haven't watched my review of the previous two Final Fantasy XIII games, I love Final Fantasy XIII. Yes, it's weird, odd, and while I prefer older installments of the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy XIII will always have a special place in my heart. And no, that is not because Lightning is my number one waifu. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. Final Fantasy XIII 2 also has a place in my heart more or less, but it does not hold any weight compared to its previous install. But then there is Final Fantasy XIII 3, which has been a while since I played it, but I always struggled to give it a place. It is the reason why I waited so long to play and review it after my completion of Final Fantasy XIII 2. But now the time has come. I have played it and now I'm going to give it a place and review it. After the events of Final Fantasy XIII 2, the world stagnated and seemed to be heading towards its end as chaos is slowly consuming it day by day. After many centuries, only a small remnant of land is still left habitable for the remaining people, whom are living their lives and awaiting the inevitable end. But Oblivion does not await these poor souls as their savior Lightning has returned to save them in the final 13 days of the world. As she is tasked by the god Benevuelza to guide these poor souls to the new world. In return, Benevuelza promises Lightning that she will see her sister again and hopefully we will finally see them reunited. Just like in the previous installment stories, we got a main theme and focus on it. Before we had fate and time, and here in Final Fantasy XIII 3, we have hope. On top of that, a lot of other interesting topics are discussed, like will of gods, ends of worlds, natural balance of life, and even the creation of new worlds. But unlike the previous installments, it fails to delve into any of these topics, and worse, it fails to properly focus on its main theme as well. This is caused by a mix of shallow yet rushed writing and an unfortunate pacing issue. The game takes place in the final 13 days of the world and that translates to a constant active time. Think along the lines of Zelda Majora's Mask or Persona, which is a very cool time mechanic and it is one that shines here as well as time is heavily incorporated in the ways you interact with the world and how things can turn out. However, it does mean that the story moments can be far away from each other because time can get in your way. Let's say you're wanted to do a mission but you get to the location where you had to be but you're one hour too late. So you have to wait an entire day before you can come back and continue the story. And while the game offers you an option to skip ahead in time to get faster to those story moments, you don't actually want to do that because time is very limited and you want to be as effective with it as possible. That is why I call the pacing issue very unfortunate as it's a byproduct of a very cool time mechanic. What is even more unfortunate is that whenever we get to the story moments, many of them felt shallow and rushed. Themes or character development that clearly deserved more exploration was created and resolved in a couple of cutscenes that again were badly paced. Especially when you consider that we interact with characters we have seen in previous installments. They felt like a weak shadow of who they used to be. I mean, it's great that they managed to get them all here in this game, but what is the point of having them here when they are badly utilized? Now, you can make the argument that this game has to conclude the trilogy. At this point, two games already spend a lot of hours on building up, developing characters, events, lore and story. This third game now just needs to conclude that, which is a fair argument to make and one that I usually make myself as well. 
The last entry of a trilogy should be used to conclude what has been set up before. But the problem is that Final Fantasy XIII feels heavily disconnected to what came before. And rather than concluding something, it felt like it tried to completely create a new world and story that could stand alone. Now the previous installments of the trilogy also had a certain design feel like they needed to be able to stand alone. But at the core they still felt connected to each other. For example, the second game we played slash saw a world that continued after the events of the first game. But Final Fantasy XIII's world and story have barely to no connection to the world or the stories or themes that were discussed in the previous installments. Yes, it took the ending of the second game, but everything else seems to have been left behind. I felt very lost in this new world, in the sense of lore but also design. Just like with the characters, it felt like a weak shadow of what I was used to. Maybe it was to put emphasis on the end of the world story, but then again, established lore and such seem to have been forgotten or not implemented in this world. On the other hand, the locations we visit do look cool and are a great example of doing semi-open worlds without choking them with too much busy work. As I was making my way through the cities or open fields, I got a similar feeling as what I had when playing Yakuza. The world feels large and open, but it doesn't require empty spaces to create it. And while Yakuza definitely did it better, I did enjoy the places we got to visit here in Final Fantasy XIII 3. It's just that I asked myself if this was the right time to switch everything up so far in the trilogy, as we could have had the same effect in terms of level slash open world design while maintaining the old locations we have explored before. On the other hand, because things got switched up so much, we did get this active timer mechanic, which creates the biggest diversity between the previous installments, but is also the element that sets this game apart in a very good way. As time passes in the game, certain possibilities get taken away from you or get unlocked. Personally, I will say that here this system is very simplified in its possibilities compared to previous mentioned games that do something similar. But nonetheless, compared to the previous games, it does add more to your gameplay experience. Though it does make the experience itself more niche. Because of this mechanic, the game requires of you a lot of running around and, well, timing when doing main and side quests. People and locations are only available around certain time. And you gotta memorize it and plan out your day to get the best out of it and to reach most places and people before the timer runs out. Which can be fun and frustrating, because the game won't give you active information about these time gaps for NPCs, resulting in situations where you either have to wait around for the NPC to show up because you're too early at the location, or that you just have missed them because you're a couple minutes late. So if you are someone that is very quickly stressed out about time and especially the lack of it, then you surely will experience some stress here as well. What doesn't help is that quest guidance is often very vague. It does not follow the traditional quest design of following a quest marker. Instead, you have to delve in deeper into the quest dialogue, ask NPCs for direction, or follow your gut feeling, or even just guess what to do or where to be. Just like the time mechanic, this adds a very nice twist to your experience. But again, it also makes the experience very niche. And while I love this kind of experience, it was also a little bit frustrating, as sometimes I was just completely lost in what to do with a side quest. And while some were doable to figure out and knowing where to be, others were just a nightmare as they were just unclear on what to do. And you really want to figure out these side quests as they are very rewarding. As instead of rewarding you with skill points or XP, the game directly rewards you with stats. But there was one thing that Final Fantasy XIII 3 was very clear about. Heck, it's something that the entire Final Fantasy XIII trilogy is clear about that around this time Square Enix was still trying to reinvent their combat system. And three games in, we still see drastic changes to it. In the first game we had more of a battle observer and commander point of view when fighting in combat. 
The second game kept that ideal of observing alive, but added a monster capture and team rotation spin to it. And now here with the third one, we got a very individual action focused combat system. While there are still some elements left from the previous installment like skill names, a stagger system and switch between classes so to say, there's not a lot of similarities in the combat itself left. The most noticeable change right out of the gate is that combat is done mostly solo as lightning. Only in rare cases you fight with another teammate and even then it's a far cry from the team management aspect we not just saw in the other two games in the trilogy but in the entire Final Fantasy franchise. An element that is consistently present in the trilogy but still went through a drastic change is the switch mechanic of classes. Here however you don't switch between classes but between schematas. Schematas determine heavily what your tools are in battle. However, unlike the previous installments, you have much more freedom to do whatever you want in building these schematas. In previous installments, there was a lot of menu browsing involved when you wanted to use certain spells or attacks. They got rid of that here, which is good, and decided that each schemata only has four skill slots, and that it's up to you to find not just the best four combinations, for each individual schemata you equip, but also find the best way to connect them together. Of the trilogy, Final Fantasy XIII III offers the most customizable style of combat. And from my personal experience, I would say that it's the only game of the three that heavily promotes doing your own thing. In previous installments, it always felt like there was just one strategy to actually beat bosses, and you should just stick with that as other strategies were not viable or made the encounter so difficult you kept running into a wall endlessly. Especially the first game captured that feeling of being very constricted in possibilities with the combat builds and development of your party. Here it is almost completely gone. While the game still favors beating the enemy as effectively as possible via the stagger system, it does not punish you when you go your own little way with a less effective build that suits your playstyle better. On top of that, changing your playstyle in the rare cases you might need to is very easy. The game opted to make skills function as lootable and upgradable items that you can equip whenever you like. A big difference compared to the previous games as there you would be punished with grinding combat encounters for picking and developing the wrong skill route. I absolutely loved this and the freedom the game offered in terms of setting up and creating your character. Maybe the biggest problem or at least a luxury issue with this system where you can create whatever you like is that it connects stats to outfits which there are an insane amount of in this game and you're not able to use them all. Which is a shame because many of them are really cool or cute but you want certain stats so you don't use the outfits you really like and go for the stats. But then you also say screw it and just go with whatever you like because the game says you can and you most certainly should. Case in point, the game has great customization when it comes to the combat setup. Maybe an actual major problem I found in the combat system is the guarding system. In many combat encounters, guarding is a part of the being the most effective playstyle, yet the blocking window constantly felt very small or unpredictable. I tried learning it and spending maybe more time than I would have liked on it, but the results of blocking felt more like I had luck on my side whenever I pulled it off than actual skill. Though I have seen people online master it, so it could also just be me having skill issues. Nonetheless, guarding is not a must to get through the game, but I did feel annoyed that I had to give up on this gameplay element at some point. Overall, I sometimes felt like I gave up on the combat altogether. Because as much as I enjoyed the setup of the combat, I wish the combat itself was just as much fun. Fighting in this combat system, especially later down the line in my playthrough, felt very uninteresting at times. Maybe it's because most encounters consisted of fighting the same 4 to 5 enemies, and instead of offering interesting fights, I was just going through the paces, defeating enemies that I was slowly outgrowing. 
in the rare cases you had to push through or overcome a challenge, the satisfaction of beating it felt very low. As during the encounter, I just felt like I was pushing in mindless combos I created with my schematas instead of acting and reacting on the enemy or a situation that got created during the combat. It's truly a shame that in many combat encounters later in the game, this combat system with so much customization turned into such mindless thing. Overall, Final Fantasy XIII is a mixed bag of interesting world elements, great setup for combat, but with weaker combat feeling and a story that presents itself in a very shallow, weak way that does conclude a trilogy, but not a larger story told over three games. Even now, after I wrote this review, I still struggle to give this game a place. Maybe the biggest lesson this game taught me is that I finally realized what I enjoyed the most of the previous games. On the other hand, because the story is so shallow and is only collected lightly to the previous installments, it can be played somewhat standalone. The game does flashbacks rather well and as events and characters are not that heavily involved with Lightning's adventure, there is not a lot you would miss out on. Still, even if you would approach it as a standalone game, keep in mind that it's rather niche in certain aspects. The combat is one of them, but especially the progression of time and the management of side and main quests are to be kept in mind when considering playing this game. Then again, the way you set up yourself for the combat and the time mechanic is very interesting and I could see this scratch a certain itch some people might have. And be sure to check this game out if you are someone like that. Though if you are someone that finds timers rather stressful and don't like vague main and side quest directions, then you might have a hard time here and I would not recommend touching this game. A guide however can help you here in case you still want to give it a try and it will make your experience a lot better, but it still requires of you a degree of management and it does not solve larger problems like with the story. On that base, I could recommend Final Fantasy XIII 3 to you. It's still a bit of a rough sill, but if you want to delve into it as a standalone game, you actually can. Yet, if you want the full experience, there is only one place to start, and that is the beginning.